What the fuck was that? So a Meisner follower put us debunkers in our place. Hey guys, Nick here and welcome to the channel. And in today's video, I am going to respond to a critics uh, video about us debunkers. This involves myself and other channels like Alan from uh, In Defense of the Traditional Martial Arts and Tomo from Martial Geeks. Yeah, I'm not going to mention the channel's name because I don't want any drama. But yet again, I'm going to make the topic so specific that uh, I couldn't be talking about anyone else. So I'm just going to give my thoughts and just uh, fill in the holes of the argument. Because general statements are made and there's not enough nuance in the conversation. I am a pig, so you gotta come fight me in the mud and get a little dirty. So first things first, if your training goals is just to move well and not fall and break your collarbone, that's good. Any exercise is better than no exercise. Well, you know all about that. <laughs> no, actually, I don't. I play real sports. I'm not trying to be the best at exercising. <laughs> Some exercise or forms of exercise is more effective than others. But once again, it comes down to compliance. You're more likely to do something if you enjoy it. So if it helps you reach your training goals, then by all means, stick to it. But let's talk about fighting, self-defense, and violence. Okay, so I actually filmed a whole section here discussing the difference between violence, fighting, and self-defense. However, I think that's a video appropriate for another day, covered on its own. So, uh, down in the description below, I've left links to videos from In Defense of the Traditional Martial Arts where Alan discusses uh, fighting and self-defense. So I think you should better check that out. So let's move on to the next section here. You addressed a video like this. With the eye gouge. And here's my, myself and my friend showing how it doesn't work. You missed the point of the video. You made the general statement of an eye gouge is about replacing the eye with the finger. You are sticking the finger so deep in the eye socket that the eye pops. You are not wrong, but you missed the point of the video. The point of the video is if a dominant position hasn't been established, that eye gouge is not going to work because there's this lovely thing called an alignment issue. Surprise, motherfucker. So, going for the eye, you just have to move the head. Oh, the alignment's broken. Can't eye gouge now, and it's a constant fight for that. Have to treat an eye gouge like it is a submission. And the whole thing is control. Establish control before you attempt submissions. Keep control while establishing the submission. Once again, in defense of the traditional martial arts, Alan explains it perfectly. I'll link that video down below as well. Now let's move on those assumptions that you talk about. It's not fighting techniques. Okay, then what are these videos about? What the fuck? If those videos aren't about fighting, then... I missed the part where that's my problem. I just think it's very convenient that, you know, videos like that get shown. It looks like fighting. It's about facing different styles of martial arts. And then all of a sudden you say it's not about fighting. Sounds like an easy cop-out. But I, I do understand that Adam Meisner says that he teaches cultivation, not fighting. Very slowly it comes back to him. Push. 
I can receive. But even that cultivation of chi is fake. Chi, this whole thing of concentrating chi, uh, cultivating chi, it's fake. Following some old Taoist principles, uh, which all knowledge, which hasn't been proven to be tr true. That inner alchemy thing is the biggest load of bull. And then even in these instances, it's him cultivating chi in order to fight other styles. That looks super silly and unrealistic. And it is if you don't have stick it here, join, follow, cultivate properly. Absolute bull. Then you have two other affiliates of Adam Eisner's using these teachings and teaching fighting. But once again, it's not about fighting. You yourself did a video on what it feels like to punch a Tai Chi practitioner. Harder. So it has Why would you punch a Tai Chi practitioner if it wasn't about fighting? You don't want to stand there and get hit, but it's going to happen. So you don't want to even notice. It just sounds like the whole idea is to create controversy by design. And then you get idiots like me who fall in this rabbit hole. And you get other people that defend this st stupid malarkey. Use another example, which I've covered. If I move mechanically, I'm probably just... Now you make it sound like I'm attention grabbing. Well, you are too. You're on YouTube, right? Anyway, how you describe it is it not about being fighting makes it sound even more pointless. You say that those demonstrations was there to show about how the Tai Chi body adapts. Then I can change quite simply and come back into him. As and how an isolated shoulder can move in these predicaments. Well, that shoulder wasn't very well uh, isolated because I have explained it in my video that there wasn't even a solid grip on it. Then I can change quite soon. Us are talking about the Tai Chi body adapting. Well, that bridging technique there is very off. And I mean, it just shows that Adam Eisen's got weak glutes. Simply, and come back into him as I Mr. Hill, you have no ass. You see what I did there? Criticize form, because that's what you guys do to me. Not arguing the concepts, never ever. We don't want to discuss the nuance of everything, right? Next assumption. <music> Looks like the people don't train. And then you talk about just because they don't have muscles and six packs and whatnot. All right, once again, you're making a general statement, but uh, there's more nuance to it. When it comes to training for uh, athletic performance, health, and aesthetics, those are three different goals and requires three different methods of training. Even training for athleticism, uh, you have to break it down in more subgenres, basically, or break it down into different methods. When we say the people, it looks like the people don't train, they stiffen their movements. That video that Adam Meisner uh, did about countering uh, a boxer's jab and cross, the guy that he's doing the demonstration with doesn't move like a boxer. Doesn't look like he trains. He looks like weak, stiff, doesn't know how to move properly. Jab's the way. Oh. Or if you throw a jab cross. Oh. You see the people there, they've got their shoulders rolling forward. They've got bad postures. You can see sway backs. You can see tight hips. You can see that there's no glute activation, tight hamstrings. Just the way that they walk, you can see there's not good movement. There's no strong posture. You can see all the imbalances and weaknesses. If you go and see a good personal trainer, a very competent personal trainer, they will point out everything wrong. Just as they meet you. They can see with the way that you step, what muscles are activated as you walk, and they can see the alignment in your posture, and they can highlight every imbalance. Once again, there's more to uh, that statement. Oh, it look, doesn't look like you train. Then six-pack abs. And you talk about how grueling the training is to back it up. Listen, that's a general statement you can say about any skill. Playing the guitar, the more you put in, the more you'll get out. Playing chess, the more you put in, the more you get out. Doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the more you put in, the more you'll get out. That general statement means nothing. But if you are learning the incorrect way and you're training the incorrect way, where there's no progressive overload, learning the wrong responses, guess what? You're going to look like a fool. You're still going to be weak. Mind you, repetitive overload is a thing. So if you are doing the same movements over and over and over, that creates imbalances in the body and that will promote an injury. It's just a shame that you've met such lazy martial artists before. 
going to these workshops and camps. Let's talk about the documentary, The Power of Chi. Now the documentary was supposed to show that Adam is legit. Meanwhile, you can't trust documentaries. I've mentioned this in another video. Documentaries are designed to create a narrative. The argument of uh, those athletes are paid to do it, like it's a general statement and it's not wrong, but let's uh, go into more nuance about it, right? Let's actually dive into how the film industry works a little bit. Now with reality TV and documentaries, they have to capture a lot of footage, right? And a lot of the times, the footage that they capture, they snip out bits, right? Which is a lot of context in order to make content, right? They remove context in order to make content. So that way they can come to a singular narrative, right? That way the audience can come to a singular conclusion. So, those athletes were paid to do a job. They signed a contract, they made an agreement, they were told that well, they're gonna film this, this is what they're looking for, they wanna create this, all right? The athletes show up, they film everything, and everything's going smoothly, and then all that footage gets taken to the editing room where they start snipping away stuff, right? And they end up creating something with a narrative that wasn't to the initial agreement. So that agreement wasn't adhered to via the contract, so a cease and desist could have been issued. Then, the producers of The Power of Chi removed the movie from being streamed because it broke a contractual agreement. Hence, the athletes were still paid to do a job. Now, there could also be a non-disclosure agreement put into place. I've worked in film, you, you have these. You agree to stuff. You're not allowed to put certain things on social media. You're not allowed to put behind the scenes stuff on social media uh, until said stuff is released. You're not allowed to talk about it. Don't you find it interesting that none of these athletes actually did interviews or podcasts, or whatever, uh, promoting this film before its release? Don't you find it funny that even after this film was released, none of these athletes actually spoke about how great Adam Heisner is or how great his abilities cultivating chi is. Sounds a bit fishy, doesn't it? Now, with addressing the, the controversy created by design with the YouTube videos, what makes you think that the same wasn't done here? Yes, those athletes were there to do a job. They pitched up, they did their job. They just never knew the actual intent of the job. Because producers of films are actually kind of shady. I should mention with the case of this documentary, you know, these athletes could be shills just being paid to, you know, be dishonest. It's a great possibility. They could have done it on their end, knowing what they're producing and go like, hey, this is actually hurting our brand. I'll get the video wiped off. So talking about these athletes being shills or whatever, just taking the money and actually doing something dishonest is very plausible, actually. Celebrities and athletes have uh, been very scammy over the years and it's been well documented i mean who's that uh famous soccer player that uh endorses herbal life a very shady company to be honest how many fitness influencers have uh sold uh really poor fitness supplements dishonest marketing that time that kim kardashian uh was in that sketches ad to advertise those shoes that would give you a great butt YouTubers who just promote these sponsorships, not actually using the product, but you know, it gives them money. Money talks, my dude. I cannot hold these athletes as being honest ones. When so many influencers and celebrities in the past have shown to be dishonest, as well as other athletes that have endorsed uh, sketchy products as well. Once again, the evidence should be lying with the pressure testing. That will get skeptics to believe. Not a documentary. The documentary just helps reaffirm the beliefs of those who already believe in this junk. It's to make more money off of the target audience already. And mind you, I've covered a, a section of this documentary that you mentioned about, right? Where I took a friend of mine who was a strong man and did the exact same trick that Adam Eisner did with Brian Shaw. Now, nobody actually argues with the concepts that I've presented for that. We really discussed that Brian Shaw wasn't directly pushing Adam, he was just kind of preventing being pushed. 
and how that works to make Adam look more powerful than what he really is. It's a physics trick. It's not chi. If Brian Shaw could push directly at Adam and not just hold the position the best he could, I think it would have been a much different result. Even having one of uh, Adam's affiliate teachers discussing that part in the film, giving the clues, actually. Also, direct student and uh, master Adam Meisner. Again, this is a demonstration of Adam omitting Tai Chi abilities or skills. So there's the line along his heels. So he's at a, a huge disadvantage here with anyone, let alone with the mountain that is Brian Shaw. <laughs> so there's the direction of force of the stance of Brian. The natural direction of force is where you can see the arrow now. So Brian wasn't asked to push on Adam. He was asked to not let Adam push him. But then you go like, oh, it's resistance. Yeah, it's resistance. It's non-compliance, but based off a false positive. Because somebody's not going to really react like that when you push them. But now I guess this comes to the next part of the argument. Go do a workshop. If you want to find out the truth, go there and experience it for yourself. I would just like to point out that the placebo exists, so, you know, some people will fall for it, some will not. But going to a workshop, I'm going to compare it to this sort of experience. You need to go get your hair cut. You go to this place that everybody talks about. Everybody goes there and they get great haircuts. You go there, you get your hair cut, and you don't like it. It's like this person never actually listened to what you were saying, of what you wanted. Now you don't like it, but everybody's there like, showing appreciation for their stuff, so now you get caught up in that, so you show appreciation, you be nice, but meanwhile, you fucking hate it. You didn't get what you want out of it. That's why I don't want to get do the workshop. It's too much of a controlled environment. I want to pressure test the stuff. Right? He showed that he can use his Tai Chi against an MMA takedown. I want to see that happen. I want to feel that happen. Said he can uh, use his Tai Chi to bring you down to the ground, uh, when you throw a punch, I want to experience that. I want to pressure test it live, not through a demonstration, which these demonstrations are based off of false positives. Okay, so, I know I've issued a challenge, and I know some other guys like myself has issued a challenge to Adam Meissner, but apparently that makes us delusional and entitled to expect that this guy to fly and meet with a nobody personally. The truth is, when I issued a challenge, I didn't think it was going to be met anyway. Because not facing a skeptic keeps the illusion alive. Besides, I don't even expect him to do a fist fight if he were to accept the challenge. However, the point of issuing a challenge is to avoid the whole idea of attending a workshop and they should be able to meet me or any other skeptic on uh, their grounds. So when I say that, uh, instead of doing a demonstration, do a more of a pressure test. Once again, here are fighting techniques. Faster. And you cannot say they're not fighting techniques. So the only way to test them out to show their legitimacy would be through a fight or some friendly sparring. It doesn't have to be a fist fight, by the way. It could be a sumo match, a push hands match, uh, it could be a grappling match. Well, we need to fit boxing there because of how he demonstrated against boxing. You can literally make it the best out of three. And I would say push hands competition and sumo would be his strong point, right? We're both not so tall. Bald men with beer bellies. So, it should be an even matchup. But if not, that's it. Like, I don't expect the challenge to be met. Alternatively, we can sort it out like real men. Here's a suggestion. So, we can continue going online, showing off our toys, sharing our opinions that actually mean nothing for them sweet, sweet views. But to boil it down, somebody like Adam has to pressure test his theories. Put into practice. If you call it a martial art, you show stuff that looks like fighting, guess what, it's about fighting. And as stipulated, it doesn't have to be an MMA fight. 
You can do an MMA fight or a boxing fight without punches to the head. You can stipulate those rules if, no matter how silly they are. He doesn't even have to win said fights or said sparring. He just needs to show that he can do those techniques under a pressure-tested environment or get the same sort of reactions. Otherwise, you're not going to get the skeptics to shut up. Yo, uh, check out the video from Marshall Geeks in the it's a link in the description below about why skeptics won't believe uh, this whole Adam Meisner thing. Very good video. Thus, this controversy is going to continue and you're going to always have this back and forth. Statistically, the Tai Chi magician, like Adam Meisner, has been debunked. And then they are deemed fake masters, even by people in their own community, because they don't show legit skill. Yet Adam has been avoiding that. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I didn't do fucking shit. So, do the pressure test. So guys, if you liked this video, uh, please leave a comment with your thoughts down below. Subscribe, and then I will check you next time.